This is me, Undead Viking, and this is Merchants of Araby. Merchants of Araby is an open negotiation economic game uh, where each person is taking on the role of a caravan leader, a camel caravan leader, uh, and they're trying to basically outfit their caravan with the most resources possible and sending their camels across the desert so they can earn coins. And after a certain number of turns, after you use up all the caravans that the game has, you will see whoever has the most money, and then that will be the person that wins. Uh, it is a lot of fun. I really love negotiating negotiation games. I really love economic games. I knew as soon as I heard about this game, I knew I was going to like it. Uh, so let's dive in. I'll show you how to play, and then we'll come back here, and I'll give you my final thoughts. This is Merchants of Araby. Let me explain to you what you're looking at as I explain the game to you. Uh, these are the tents that each player will have. The reason you have a tent is because you have your money uh, in the form of these cubes here. Uh, that you are going to keep hidden. The reason you keep it hidden is because, uh, well, two things. Um, you never really want your opponents to know exactly how much money you have because then they know how much they can try to jam you for if they're trying to do the negotiation route with you. And second, whoever has the most money at the end of the game ends up being the winner. So just, you know, you want to keep that secret, obviously. All right, these are caravan cards. Those are the ways you're mostly going to be gaining your money um, by sending off your camels onto those caravan and I'm going to explain that in a little bit. Um, there's a tableau of cards here that you have access to that you're able to take from, and then of course then the giant pile of cards that are right there as well. Each person gets a uh, caravan or merchant leader. Um, in this case, this is Ahmed al Uh He is the Merchant Prince of Mages. Um, this basically says if you tilt it, you know, you, you tap it or exhaust him, he will generate this resource. And so, and that's something, you know, you just do that. And then at the end of your turn, you put it back up there. You are able to exhaust them on uh, turns that aren't yours, because on your turn you do can exhaust your entourage, because you're going to be adding other people to it as well. Uh, be you reason you uh like un uh like tap them or unexhaust them uh on your uh on your turn is because as the play goes around other players will be asking you uh say hey can I pay you some money so you know I can get you to you know produce that uh, uh resource for me so I can use it on my turn and those sorts of things now it should be mentioned before I get too far is that other than uh the money with these little cubes um all the resources are just you know, like, uh, intangible, if you will. So when I exhaust this and create the magic resource, there's no magic resource cube. It's just available to be used at that moment, and if it doesn't get used, it just evaporates and is gone. All right, so let me just, here, and, like, here's another um, another person, you know, the Merchant Princess of Jewels, Saeed Kori, and, like, she produces uh, this, the jewels or whatever. Uh, and here we have... Uh, Raman Asaf, and he produces spices, and he's the Merchant Prince of Spices, I bet you didn't see that coming. And finally, we have Bayan Safar, the Merchant Princess of Fabrics, and lo and behold, yes, she creates fabrics on her turn. Alright, so, alright, to begin with, each person is going to start with five cards, and I've just drawn five cards. Uh, some of the cards will be like uh, like virtues, like this is deference, a uh, virtue to invoke once on your turn, and uh, you can see that this is like a gem. So you could, if you needed a gem uh, resource, you could put this down and just discard it, and it would create that gem resource. Now it goes the same for all of these cards, that they will create those resources. That's a coin, um, you know, fabric, and so on and so forth, if you put those down. Now, sometimes, like, if the card says, you know, earn two coins when you give a card from your hand to an opponent. So here's, you know, ability to actually gain uh, some coins. Now, to do that, however, you have to actually pay the cost of the card, which, once again, is that. All right, so now that is a virtue. You play that on your turn. Now, here is an ally. You could discard this card just to create the magic resource that's there. However, he's an ally, and you could be adding him to your entourage. So if you could create that uh, the cost, so like by you know tapping Ahmed Al Kazar, you could create that magic resource, and then you could go ahead and place that down as part of your entourage. And your entourage stay with you forever, and so the more you have, obviously, the more options you have. And so when you when you activate him, he says resolve an opponent's caravan 
uh, when their turn ends. And so I'll explain what that means here in a little bit when I show you how to resolve an opponent's caravan and why that might matter because of timing and what have you. But, you know, th these are like different powers and abilities they have. Um, some of them, you know, like here's a junk dealer, an ally to recruit, uh, discard one card and earn a coin. So if you needed a coin, you could do that. Um, and then here's a money lender. Uh, reduce the cost to recruit a merchant or summon a djinn by one coin. So, you know, you can obviously then just use that as another resource or another ability. Now, a djinn, as this is, uh, a djinn can actually, a couple things that a djinn can do. Well, obviously, they have these different special powers. They're a magical being. But... A card with a djinn can be played at uh, any time. You can play it on your turn, on somebody else's turn, doesn't matter. And so here, you know, it's like, you know, you pay the coin uh, to do it, and you have permission to invest one camel uh, in an opponent's caravan. Okay, so now we've talked about caravans quite a bit, and, and, and as far as that goes. So on your turn, what's going to happen is you're going to draw a card. And so here's the caravan to Vidor, and that is your caravan. So on your turn, what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to try to populate uh, this particular card by any way possible um, to create the necessary resources to put your camels onto these locations that are on there. Now, they have these little numbers on there of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Don't worry about that. That's just to denote the different locations. And also you can mention, it's like, I'll let you put a camel on my caravan on spot six and things like that. Now, so as you use up your resources and also other players on their turn will want to maybe possibly put camels on your caravan as well by exhausting resources, but you don't have to allow them. They can ask for permission, and that's where the whole open negotiation things coming comes with, and that's where like that gin card actually comes in handy. It's like, I'm going to put this on there because I'm paying to put on there, because remember, a successful caravan earns money, and so you want to keep other people from earning money, but anyway, so let's just say, like, by hook and by crook, as, as, as open negotiation and conversations happen, you've placed uh, you know, your uh, particular uh, uh, camels, and other people have placed camels uh, on these locations like so. Let's say we got all the way to there, and we filled it up like that. Okay, so, um, oh, well, one other thing. After your turn is done, because on your turn what you do is you play whatever cards you want out of your hand, you exhaust or tap or whatever you want to call that, um, you activate the different cards that you have in your uh, particular uh, entourage, and you just do whatever you can, and you can take as many actions as you want as long as you have the ability to do that. And of course you add camels uh, to your caravan as well. Now. You also negotiate with other players because you can ask them to like say, hey, could you produce, hey, you know, uh, can you produce this spice for me so I could put one of my uh, camels on a location on there, you know, and so things like that. Anyway, so after your turn's done, you get to draw two cards, any two cards from the tableau that's out there. So let's like let's say we wanted this jewels merchant, and we wanted this uh, genie that says invigoration. We're gonna go ahead and take those, and then you replace the top, you replace them with the next cards uh, on there. Now, that's pretty standard, right? But that is a very important thing that happens. The reason why is because the backs of these cards actually tell you how you resolve the caravan on your turn. Now, at the very first turn when you play, you're not going to resolve a caravan because you don't have a caravan to come with. But it gets all the way around to and you, uh, us here, uh, playing the blue player, and we're going to resolve that caravan. Now, we don't know what's going to happen because, you know, several cards have been, you know, dealt or whatever. And so, like, let's just say it's this card. So this card ends up being the top card on my turn. So what happens is, first things first, is you have to actually go ahead and look and make sure that you have complete rows. And so this is very important because as each turn happens, if you do not complete a row, so here's a row or a column, then those those camels get lost and nothing happens to them. So these two camels uh, would get lost and they would vanish and they'd be gone. And so they would not score at all and you return those to the owners. Next, you then look at the card that would be in the top card and you look and see, these. this is where the bandits strike. So this is spot five. So once again, here's spot 
five. There's no camel there, but let's just say, for the sake of an argument, let's say we had cleaned that one out like so. The bandits attack, they capture that camel and steal from them and send them home packing or what have you. And now that's left. Now you can't strand any more camels, if you will, from having the bandits attack. That's you know just what happens once. And so after the bandits are done, then you put this to the side like so. And then that is how you are going to score each row. So row four will earn four coins. So white earns four coins there and two coins here. So they'd earn six coins. Blue would earn four coins total, and red would earn two plus two also. Uh, I'm sorry, red would earn two, and pink would earn two from this particular travel. So after you resolve and hand out uh, the coins to each person for, for their successful caravan, you then go ahead and return the camels uh, to everybody uh, that, that had them, and you discard the caravan card, you put this in the discard pile as well, and then you, you draw on the next caravan from any of the decks you want. You can just grab one, and so now here's one that's going to be mostly spices and a little bit of fabric, and that'll be the next caravan. And now you've got to figure out a way to get the camels onto there. That's how the game works. The game ends when there are no more caravan cards to draw over here. Uh, as soon as there's no more caravan cards to draw, you discard the top two cards off the top of the deck, and then you go ahead and resolve each remaining caravan that's left uh, with by, by handing out a card from the top of the deck like so. So you just, you know, you go ahead and, you know, hand, like, so you discard the top two, and so then this person would get that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, and so forth. And then you hand out the, you resolve the last few coins, and then... Whoever's got the most coins will win the game at that point. Now, you might be saying, because if you looked, I, I thought this too, so you, you notice that, like, there's a four, a four, you know, it looks like, you know, you know, every once in a while, like, the, you have a four, but I was, like, wondering about this as far as, like, it just seemed like, you know, the bottom row seemed to score more coins than, than, uh, than everything else. So why wouldn't you put these in the bottom row down there? Well, the reason why is because they've actually gone through the process of, like, the bandit's frequency, as you can see here, and this is actually in the rules. The top row, in positions one, two, three, pretty rare. Middle row, getting there. And then the bottom row, over half the time, the bottom row gets hit with the bandits. And so that's one of those things where they've actually figured in the probability of those particular situations. So... Yes, you can go and you can gamble and put your hamels on the bottom row in the, in the hopes that you're going to earn the most coins out of that. But chances are, you know, if you are populating that with all of your uh, camels, you're going to lose some uh, with, you know, when the bandits strike. So there you go. Uh, you know, the bottom line is that the game is pretty straightforward. What really made the game a lot of fun for me is two things. I love games that have um, victory points that you use during the game. Uh, so you have to decide if it's right to invest those coins, you know, the, your, your money cubes, into the possibility of having a good return. And so, like, because you're spending your victory points in the hopes that they will come back to you uh, with even more victory points uh, coming along with them. Uh, secondly, I love negotiation games. I love the fact that basically this entire game is open negotiation. You can trade cards, you can trade money, you can you can offer uh, to place your camel on somebody else's. You can offer to let somebody put their camel on theirs. You can do it for straight up for different resources that you can expend at that time. You can make promises and offer favors for later on in the game. The only thing is, is that at the time of the exchange, so if you say, Give me three coins and I'll let you put a camel on uh, my, my caravan. Okay, fine, great. That works, right? But if, uh, and you immediately exchange the coins uh, for the spot of the caravan. So, like, you, here's your three coins, you can put the camel on there. Anything where that is next turn, I'll give you a free ride on my caravan. Now, you don't have to pay me anything. If they agree, great, but there is nothing that binds them 
to that decision. You have to hope that they will follow through with their request. And that is parts of these games that I really love. I love being able to, like, you know, maybe, not always, but, but sometimes, you know, knock the stool out from underneath somebody uh, when they think that I'm going to repay them for their kindness. Uh, you know, that's that's all the, the part of the negotiation games, though. So, uh, those are the things I really like about the game. I love the theme. I love the look of the game. I love the fact, I love the surprise of you know, seeing where the bandits are going to strike when you turn the card over, things like that. So uh, there's a lot of stuff I really enjoy, and I'll talk about all of it and more uh, in my final thoughts. All right, so there you go. That's Merchants of Araby. As I said in the introduction, as I said, as I showed you how the game was played, I like economic games. I love economic games, and I really enjoy negotiation games. If you watched my channel before, you know that about me, theoretically, maybe? I don't know. But, see, the bottom line is, is that there's lots of games out there that are strategy games, or, or euros, if you will, uh, that are, you know, put a worker here, collect this, activate this, you know, change that into that, then turn all of this in... Uh, activate that card and then get 17 victory points and those are fun games i enjoy those i i like figuring that out i like processing the turn i like doing the build up and then the cash in there's lots of things about those types of games that uh really appeal to me however negotiation games appeal to me because of the fact that it kind of takes the mechanism out i mean yes there's some fun little card play that goes on during this game um there's some interesting things that you can do you know to, to chain different actions together to, to get their needed result that you want but the thing is is that this game is set up in a way that you never have everything that you need to be able to do what you want you have to have other people invest in your caravan for you to have that caravan be successful it is a very rare turn where you can set yourself up to make sure that caravan has enough camels in a row or a column uh, so it'll be actually worth anything when it comes around your turn and so there's this fun little game where you and the other players are constantly kind of battling but not really battling with each other you know trying to you know finagle the best possible spots on each person's card and like also there's like a little bit of a push your luck thing it's like okay well i'm gonna put my guy on the eight and i'm gonna really hope for the best in this case please please robbers please please you know and plus you know obviously those corners the corner spots are are good you know why because you know people can finish off a row or a column those middle locations you know not so much so there's all kinds of fun little tiny nooks and crannies with the strategies of this game that ultimately what it comes down to is your ability to bamboozle the people around you you'll convince them that they're getting a better deal out of something that you're actually probably maybe getting something better out of and so i really really enjoy games that just say you know what go for it negotiate do whatever you want. I mean, there's lots of games out there where people try to say, hey, you know, I'll not do this if you don't do that. And, you know, I guess technically if the rules don't state that you can't do that, you can, but you, you kind of have an understanding. And if you're going to sit down and play Agricola, you and the other players are going to say, look, don't take, you know, the stone this turn and I'll give you some of my wood cubes. You know, you just, you're just not supposed to do that. I mean, but <laughs> so ultimately it's one of those things where uh, when you have a game that just says, do whatever. <laughs> it's kind of an open and and wonderful feeling uh, and refreshing feeling uh, to have that option available to you. So um, if you like games where negotiation, and as I said, like you kind of remove yourself from the mechanisms and you actually are then able to just pit your wits against the other people at the table, I strongly suggest you check out Merchants of Araby. If you have any questions about the game, by all means, ask away. I'll be happy to answer those to the best of my ability. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I am the Undead Viking, telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day.